Welcome to class 17 on topics in power electronics and distributed generation. Uh, in the last class, we were discussing about the need for faster switching when you connect a DG to the grid and then we discussed uh, 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 methods for having semiconductor based switches. We talked about uh, SCR based uh, uh, transfer schemes and then this is an example of a static circuit breaker. And, uh, what we saw is that uh, with semiconductor based uh, switch, you can have faster switching and the number of cycles can be more compared to a electromechanical uh, switch. Uh, however, the power loss will be more and uh, the electrical isolation capability of a semiconductor based uh, switch uh, is not as high as a uh, 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 physical open air gap uh, or a open gap contact. So, electrically it is considered uh, less rugged uh, and it is more expensive. So, today what we will do is uh, we will look at, uh, uh, so we looked at the physical switch. So, today we will look at the smarts that go behind the operation of a switch, which would essentially be a relay uh, or something that commands the switch to open or close. And uh, for DG application, this would typically be a relay which commands the switch to either connect or to disconnect. So, uh, the, the operation of the switch would be controlled by uh, a external uh, device. If you look at uh, relays, uh, relays have been traditionally used as uh, protective devices uh, for protection of a variety of uh, power system equipment you are protecting a, a, for a variety of faults, uh, different conditions. Uh, in a traditional uh, power system, you have been using relays for generation, generator protection, transmission protection, uh, at the substation level uh, for distribution systems. Uh, in a distribution system, you would have a, a protection uh, at uh, for substation at the substation level At the substation level, you could have uh, large uh, loads where the cost of the load may be quite significant. So, you might have a, a special relays for uh, load protection like large machines, uh, transformers, uh, what large equipment. And uh, certainly a valuable uh, device if uh, you connect a large uh, distributed generator source, you would then uh, think of uh, protecting it with a relay. Okay. So, you would have the distributed generation uh, or the DG interconnection protection. So, if you look at the uh, attributes of a protective device, you are looking at uh, uh, a protective device that has uh, that operates at high speed. So, it is capable of making decisions uh, rapidly. Uh, you would also like to have selectivity in the sense that uh, if you have a, a relay which is making a decision of whether to trip or whether not to trip, uh, it should trip where it is necessary. For example, if you have a fault in the zone of protection, it has to trip, whereas if the fault is out of the zone, it should not trip. 
So, you should also not uh, uh, trip for uh, under voltage when you are having an overcurrent. So, it should be tripping for the right reason. Okay. So, it has to be selective in making the decision of whether to trip or not. And typically when you want decisions at high speed, uh, you might be more prone to noise, you might be more, more prone to uh, making the wrong decision. So, a uh, trade off curve might be that if your speed is very fast, you might be having poor selectivity or if you are having more time to make the right decision, then your speed is naturally less. So, a trade off might be uh, along a direction such as this and your ideal relay is uh, should be capable of operating at high speed and high selectivity. Okay. So, uh, ideal relay would be something which is high speed and high selective, highly selective, but the trade off in your uh, algorithms would be between your speed and selectivity. Okay. Uh, another trade off would be in, in terms of uh, your uh, reliability, you would like your relay to, uh, to be extremely reliable, uh, it should be fully protected against damage, it should be fully protected against uh, malfunction, poor operation and to add protective systems, to add redundant circuits uh, etcetera, you would incur, incur more cost. So, many times when you want to have very high reliability, your, your cost would be high. So, if you want to have very high reliability, your cost would be high and if you try to eliminate the cost a lot, you might end up with poor reliability. So, you might have something very low cost and not reliable at all. So, your trade off curve might be along a line like this and in this situation your ideal uh, relay should be low cost, but highly reliable. So, your ideal situation would be somewhere over here. So, having an actual uh, relay is a trade off between multiple requirements, you may not be able to have everything being met at once, you might end up being having a more expensive relay, but it is meeting your requirement, you try to make it cheaper, you may have to trade it off with certain other aspects. If you look at uh, what you need to protect in a uh, in a DG application uh, where you uh, are bringing in a DG to your system. So, in DG applications, So, one thing you would definitely want is to whatever loads are there in your facility should be protected. Okay. The second uh, 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 equipment that you would die to, uh, like to be, pro uh, to be protected is the DG itself, okay, the distributed generator source. So, these, these are things within the facility. But you also saw that uh, you could have equipment which uh, say you could operate your DG and potentially damage maybe your neighbor's equipment okay, because of things like out of phase reclosing. So, and you want to protect the distribution net uh, system itself because uh, in a situation of unintentional islanding, we saw that uh, the operation of the DG can potentially damage your uh, your uh, your actual uh, distribution feeder itself. Okay. So, 
So, your protection is not just uh, behind your point of common coupling, it is also upstream of the point of common coupling and when you are incorporating a source, you are you need to actually ensure that uh, the protection is being adequately accomplished. Okay. And we saw when we are discussing uh, uh, protection, we need to identify zones of protection, you would have overlapping protection between zones and uh, potentially backup protection in case something fails, is there adequate backup. And you once you have protective relays, you need to think about what are its settings how do you, what sort of uh, uh, faults are you trying to protect against. So, those aspects need to be decided. Okay. If you look at uh, the, uh, the uh, evolution of relays, the, what has been around in the system for a while, uh, the earliest uh, relay would be your uh, electromechanical type of relay, uh, where uh, you have uh, say currents applying torques on disc and then you would have springs and damping of the disc to determine whether uh, your uh, relay would trip. So, you would have individual electromechanical uh, devices with moving parts and each such device would uh, accomplish some functionality. So, you might have uh, overcurrent relays being one mechanical package, you might have uh, imbalance relays being another package, uh, reverse power flow relay being another package. So, you would have electromechanical packages one for each type of relay functionality. And if you look at what happened next, people then realize that the electromechanical relays follow some particular dynamical uh, uh, function. So, it is trying to accomplish some uh, differential equation. And if you have some equation that can be modeled, you could also implement it with an uh, analog domain with things like operational amplifier circuits. So, the next uh, after the electromechanical relay, there came uh, analog relays followed by digital and multifunctional. So, if you look at uh, uh, the, these three, these are actually solid state. Okay. compared to the electromechanical relay which is uh, uh, which is which is having moving parts uh, within the the relay package then after people started looking at uh, uh, analog circuits for relays then by the 80s the late 80s you had uh, microprocessors and people started having microprocessor based relays so whatever was being uh, written as a equation in a op amp could now be implemented in a processor. So, you had uh, digital processors doing the calculation and that was the start of uh, a relay where you could actually program the settings. Okay. You could have programmable relays and by uh, uh, off late the processors have become more and more powerful. So, you do not need multiple processors each for each one relay functionality. You could have many functions being accomplished within a single processor. And so, you now have multifunctional uh, relays and these are uh, programmable relays they are also called uh, IEDs in intelligent electronic devices uh, where you could actually do a lot of uh, sophisticated uh, 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 programming and uh, 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 sort of lot implement lot of sophisticated functions. If you look at the relay uh, uh, types, uh, ANSI has uh, provided a list of uh, relay numbers. For example, uh, 52 would be an ANSI number for a, a AC circuit breaker. So, this 52 is an AC circuit breaker. Uh, you would have uh, uh, instantaneous overcurrent rela uh, relays that would correspond to uh, ANSI number of 50, 51 would correspond to time overcurrent. You could have uh, suffix for these numbers for example, 51 G would mean a ground time overcurrent or a 51 N would mean a neutral time overcurrent. Uh, v 51 V would mean 
a voltage restrained time over current. Okay. So, you could have different uh, combinations such as that, then you can have over voltage, uh, you can have instantaneous or time over voltage, you can have frequency relays, over frequency, under frequency, uh, you can have uh, relays which are not just for uh, opening, you could have relays which uh, guide closing of breakers. For example, if you have two sources and if you are able to have its amplitude to be aligned, its uh, phase to be aligned, its frequency to be the same, then you could close a breaker without causing significant transients and that is what a synchronization check relay would do. Okay. And you could have synchronizers which explicitly give the command to change your frequency setting or your voltage amplitude setting. Say suppose it is to a machine, it might uh, uh, give commands to a governor or a exciter to change the operating point. Uh, so, you could have synchronizers, you could have say for example, under voltage relays uh, again instantaneous or time. You could also have say suffix like R which means that say if you have under voltage where the voltage is so low that you consider the voltage to be 0, which means that you, you have a dead bus and you need to black start a dead bus, you might uh, close a switch to energize a dead bus. Okay. Uh, so, you would have uh, 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 relays for uh, functions such as that. Uh, we also saw that uh, you could have uh, relays which uh, operate as a function of power level. So, you calculate the power level, if it goes too high you might be at a over power condition. Also you could see that if the power goes negative, for example, we saw an example of a anti islanding function where we look at the sign of the power, whether it is becoming too low. If it is going negative, then you could uh, potentially detect a unintentional island. So, that would be a reverse power relay. Okay. You could have uh, power quality based uh, relay functions like 47 is uh, phase voltage imbalance. Uh, you could then the result of a phase voltage imbalance would be a uh, negative say sequence uh, negative sequence over current. So, for example, in a, a machine load uh, it might be sensitive to overheating of negatives due to negative sequence current coming in. So, you would have relays for a variety of functions. There, there, this is just a sample, there is a large uh, list, uh, you can get the full list in uh, say Wikipedia, they have uh, a list of uh, ANSI device numbers available. Okay. So, the question is uh, now with this, how to make use of it for uh, operating a protective device. Okay. And we will look at an example where uh, you have a simple example of a three phase circuit breaker. So, in, in here you have say a three phase uh, AC circuit breaker 52, you have uh, incoming uh, AC bus, three phase AC bus and uh, you want to protect some line, cable or load downstream. So, you have a protective bus downstream of the circuit breaker and say you want to implement uh, a three phase uh, breaker with uh, over current protection and also have uh, neutral over current protection. Okay. So, you might have a neutral wire for which you want to uh, uh, prevent over current in the neutral wire. Okay. So, this is an example of this. So, for relays you would then uh, need to make a decision which means that you need to sense what is happening. So, here you have uh, three CTs sensing the current that is coming through uh, the, the line and then you are applying it to over current relays. So, this is 51 is a over current functionality. So, you have uh, 51 over current for phase A, for phase B and for phase C and your sum of the currents in phase A plus B plus C would be your neutral current. Uh, and then you can then look at whether there is a over current on the neutral and based on this information, you have a logic which would then decide on whether to initiate a trip of the circuit breaker. Okay. So, you would have a circuit breaker where you can initiate a trip action. 
Similarly, you could also initiate a action to close the breaker which could say in many cases uh, for smaller breakers you would just manually uh, operate the breaker to close it. Uh, you could also have say uh, circuit breakers with uh, uh, motor motorized with that are motorized which means that you could then give a signal to actually close the breaker rather than manually go in and close the breaker. Okay. So, the logic can be uh, often it is expressed as ladder logic or it could just be the plain combinational logic uh, to look at uh, what should be the condition under which you uh, uh, operate the switch. So, in this example you might say uh, uh, tripping of the breaker. for uh, phase A over current which is accomplished by the 51A functionality or phase B over current. or so closing in this uh, in a simple case the closing may be a manual uh, operation and then you might say okay at what current level are you going to trip? So, you might have a group setting for the phase over current levels, you might have a different setting for your neutral over current level. So, with the once you have a, a digital programmable platform, you can have a lot of flexibility on how even something as simple as a circuit breaker can actually implement the characteristic. And we saw in the in when we are discussing about circuit breaker protection, you could have now multiple uh, say inverse time characteristics. So, to have short, long, instantaneous. So, essentially you are now grouping together multiple such functionalities to implement uh, such functions. Okay. If you look at uh, the, the actual uh, computation of whether there is a overcurrent that is happening or some action that needs to be taken in typical power uh, protection applications you are looking at uh, sampling rates of 8 to uh, 16 times your normal 50 hertz rate. So, it is not as fast as what you would in a power electronic application where your switching frequency may be 10 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz etcetera. In a relay you are actually sampling at a at an intermediate rate to make a decision on whether to actually operate the relay or not. Uh, and often uh, and as we discussed many times the decisions are based on uh, at RMS time frame rather than uh, the time frame of microseconds what you would typically associate with the semiconductor devices in a power electronic uh, application. So, in a typical uh, uh, system what you would also have is uh, uh, you, uh, you might have a DG system where you might have a control system and a protection system. And what you need to ensure in many applications is that uh, uh, these uh, control systems and protection systems need to be independent. In what you mean is that if you have a control failure your protection should not fail. 
So, uh, uh, when things are going bad, you should be able to safely shut down. You should not depend on your uh, control being right to protect yourself. Okay. And your protection system should be able to safely uh, shut down uh, your overall uh, uh, system in case of a control failure. Okay. And if you look at a, uh, a typical uh, high power DG uh, interconnection, you would have separate uh, uh, protection systems for the DG, you would have uh, separate for the interconnection, you would have separate protection for, uh, uh, for uh, you would have separate uh, control for your DG equipment. So, for example, this is an example where you are connecting uh, DG to a facility and you are coming through your mains, your point of coupling might be just immediately downstream of your uh, transformer and you have the main breaker coming into the facility. You might say split it off into uh, non-critical loads which might be you might be able to shut off in case of uh, failure of uh, or poor power quality on the grid. Uh, then you have a interconnection between now your DG and your, your mains and then you would also say for example, open the breaker 523 to be able to provide uh, power to your critical loads in case your uh, grid is uh, say for example, gone down. Okay. Uh, you would also like to have protection for your DG generator itself and in case when 52.3 is open, your interconnection is open, you want this uh, breaker to also protect your critical bus. Okay. So, this would be your critical bus. You might have one critical load or multiple critical loads connected to your bus, critical bus and you need to ensure that you have your uh, DG and load protection being implemented again in an appropriate manner and that again should be implement uh, independent of DG control. In the DG control, your trying to ensure the uh, right power level, the right voltage, the right frequency etcetera for, for the control of the DG. So, you might have uh, uh, say governors, uh, if it is a power electronic converter, you might have PWM control, you might have current loops, uh, DC bus voltage control. So, those issues would be independent, ideally should be independent of the interconnection and the uh, uh, generator and the load bus protection. Okay. So, then you could ask what are the objectives of uh, these uh, protective uh, 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 systems. So, so, first if you look at uh, say this uh, uh, generator and the critical load bus protection, uh, what would its objective be? So, you would uh, like to have the standard overcurrent protection for the DG and the critical bus.
you may want to ensure uh, power, power level and balance protection when uh, those corresponding parameters are out of range. Then you might also have say uh, re uh, resynchronization say for example, you might have a situation where uh, the DG for some reason it might be in service, it might be disconnected and your power is being fed through the, to, through the grid to your loads. So, once you want to reconnect this back, you may be able to operate your circuit breaker uh, to resynchronize re this machine back to this bus. So, when your frequency voltage amplitude phase is right, you connect back and resume uh, operation back with the DG. So, that could be one of the requirements. So, after a shutdown, re resynchronization might be important. Another important aspect might be uh, uh, if you are, if for some reason say uh, your system has gone down due to a blackout and if your breaker uh, say 52.3 is open, then if you are able to start the DG, uh, after starting the DG you might be able to close. Uh, uh, 50 to 4 to give a black start for your cr critical loads. Okay, so, you might have critical load dust, dead bus restoration. Okay. So, many such functionalities would be the uh, governed by that particular interconnecting device. Then you could also say ask what would be the uh, objectives of operating this interconnection breaker. Okay. So, if you look at the objectives of that. So, first is again the standard overcurrent to protect against overcurrent. For loads, transformer and uh, even upstream towards the feeder. Uh, so, you want that particular breaker to ensure that uh, now you have two sources. So, you could have the grid causing over current damage downstream into the facility or potentially the DG causing over current damage upstream out of the facility. Okay. You might also want to prevent over voltage on the feeder. So, we saw that uh, in situations such as uh, unbalanced falls, you can have the DG providing uh, causing over voltage on phases of the feeder. 
So, you would wa want your interconnection protection to actually prevent that. So, another important aspect is to prevent uh, unintentional islands. So, so another uh, requirement would be for your uh, D, uh, for this interconnection breaker to open uh, rapidly when you sense uh, poor power quality on the grid. So, if your DG is wor wor working and you have sensed that the grid power quality has become poor, then if you rapidly open the inter interconnection, then your critical loads will. Uh, but not see the poor power quality that is coming from the grid. Okay. The outage is one possibility, you can have other power quality requirements such as uh, voltage amplitude say just sag or swells, frequency and balance, uh, potentially harmonics etcetera and you want to protect your critical loads. Uh, from uh, facing poor power quality from the source. You can also use the, uh, the interconnection breaker for resynchronization. Okay. So, if you have for example, a situation where there is an outage on the grid uh, and your 50, 52.3 has opened and your DG is now providing power to your critical load. Now, the grid has come back and you want to see when your grid voltage and the critical bus uh, voltage matches in terms of amplitude, frequency and phase, then you can actually close this particular breaker and resynchronize to the grid. So, resynchronization would also be required uh, at the interconnection protection. Also, you might have uh, 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 requirements for uh, uh, say re-energizing a dead bus. So, for example, you might have a situation where uh, the whole system is dead and maybe your DG is also disconnected and uh, uh, if for some reason uh, this particular breaker is open, you need to ensure that okay, you are monitoring the voltages and ensuring that it is a dead bus. If everything is dead, you can re-energize your, uh, uh, your critical loads as long as in, uh, you are ensuring that you are not uh, re-energizing a connected uh, DG, uh, you are not re-energizing a dead DG. Okay? So, you do not want to start up a large machine or a inverter when it is still connected uh, and when it is uh, not supposed to function, you want to prevent that but you want to actually re-energize a dead bus. So, uh, dead bus restarting with the appropriate logic would also be required. Okay.
Also, you might have some additional functionalities depending on the, the type of sensing that can be done. You might be able to monitor the amount of power that is now flowing out. You might be able to look at uh, the real and reactive uh, power that is going out into the PCC. So, you might have some additional functionalities which could uh, provide ad additional services to the facility uh, by looking at not just the variables at the interconnection, but additional variables at different locations on the system. Okay. So, so, the next thing that uh, you can uh, ask is now if you want to do all this functionality, uh, what all information would you need to measure in terms of uh, what all sensing elements would be required in for such, uh, uh, such protective operation. Okay. And typically in a power system application for sensing voltages you use uh, potential transformers PTs and for sensing currents you would use uh, CTs uh, and uh, you are you would then be able to measure your voltage on a normalized basis in uh, uh, acceptable range. You might have uh, 110 volt secondary uh, PT or you might have a 5 amp uh, CT where now the actual information that is coming into the relay would be on a normalized scale rather than on a, a wider actual physical range. And uh, so, you need to have uh, the adequate number of PTs and CTs at different locations. So, for example, over here you might have voltage measurements at the high voltage side it, which means that you would need uh, uh, volt, uh, something that measures the this at the distribution voltage level. Whereas, over here if you are measuring the voltage it would be at the consumption voltage level. So, depending on where you are applying you would need uh, different types of PTs and CTs and uh, often in a power system application you would also differentiate between uh, whether a CT is uh, uh, protection grade or, uh, or relay grade or whether it is metering grade. So, a uh, uh, relay grade CT would be capable of measuring uh, large overcurrents. Uh, its accuracy may not be as high, but you are capable of measuring uh, large fault current levels. Whereas, a metering uh, CT would be having a much higher accuracy because billing is tied to it, but it is not capable of having large overcurrents. So, it is uh, it will not be used for measuring uh, say fault current levels. So, uh, the details of PTs, CTs are acceptable uh, are can be obtained from manufacturer websites of uh, the these sensing devices. So, in this particular case you would have say for example, you might be making use of uh, voltage sensing. So, you might be uh, sensing your voltage uh, on your uh, on, on your high voltage side to see whether you are having uh, say neutral shifts or uh, neutral uh, shifts because of say unbalanced faults etcetera. Uh, when you have uh, something like a delta y transformer it does not pass 0 sequence across. So, you might have to uh, uh, sense your voltage appropriately to see whether uh, something has happened on the high voltage side. You might have uh, uh, secondary side voltage measurement, you might also have secondary side current measurement. So, with the voltage measurement you will be able to uh, look at uh, power quality uh, whether your voltage is in range, frequency is in range, whether there is distortions etcetera. Uh, once you have voltage and power you can then measure power uh, whether uh, there is power is flowing in or back out into the system. Uh, with the current you can now make use of that sense current for over current protection. Uh, then uh, if you are having voltage that is now measured uh, on your uh, incoming voltage plus also on your critical bus, then you can make use of these two voltage measurements to do synchronization of your inter interconnection. Okay. Uh, similarly, if you have voltages being measured at your critical bus and voltage being measured 
on your uh, uh, DG output that can be used to synchronize and see whether you can actually close your uh, uh, DG uh, 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 or your load protection breaker. So, uh, you could also then say for example, measure your uh, power level if you have voltage and current you could then see whether your DG is giving a over current situation to for say protection of faults on the load bus. Uh, you could also see whether uh, DG is actually supposed to output power is it due to a fault is the power coming back into the DG. So, you could ask a variety of uh, such questions. So, uh, sensing is an important aspect for uh, the overall protection of your system. So, here also you might have interconnection between your generator protection and your uh, interconnection protection. So, for example, when you want to re-energize a dead bus, you may want to know whether the status of this breaker is open and you do not want to energize a DG when it is uh, a dead DG when it is uh, still connected. So, you might have some status information going back and forth between your protective elements, but you would typically implement your protection such that even if for example, some part of the system is non-functional, you would always end up in a safe mode rather than in a mode where you can potentially have damage. Then, so the next thing that you could say is in such a system, what could be the potential zones of protection? So, when we uh, talked about uh, uh, the distribution system, we are talking about uh, say you could have substation protection, where you might have relays which protect uh, the substation transformers and the equipment at the substation. You could have feeder protection, where you are trying to uh, protect uh, uh, your the the components whatever is there on the feeder. So, if you have now a DG that is connected in a manner such as this, then you would say what is your interconnection protection doing, what is its zone. Okay. So, uh, interconnection protection might uh, say protect downstream of the breaker to prevent overcurrent from your grid flowing into your uh, into your load. So, you might have the zone of the interconnection protection but your interconnection protection is also trying to protect your your the distribution system and also your neighboring equipment so you your your interconnection protection has to protect a fairly large zone uh, so when the dg is present and uh, when your grid is pre present, if say for example, your 521 opens, you need to ensure that your DG is still uh, able to detect such a situa situation and open your interconnection in response to such a situation. And if the DG is absent and the grid is present, you want to make, sure, make use of the interconnection protection to protect up to the next protective device, which would be in this case. 52.4 or 52.6. Okay. So, you could actually determine what would be the interconnection protection. So, this would be for example, the substation protection zone. So, what is shown over here is the the, the feeder protection what is shown in pink is the interconnection protection
and you want to ensure that uh, uh, that the these devices uh, are able to uh, accomplish the the uh, required level of protection okay So, if you look at uh, the other CBs over here, here we had uh, this particular CB would protect say the zone downstream over here, this circuit breaker might protect the zone downstream over here. So, when you have your overall system, you want to ensure that every part of the system is protected, you do not have uh, 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 zones that are left out unprotected. Uh, you also want to have now in a situation such as this that you might have uh, a situation where you now have maybe just the DG or maybe just the grid or combination when both DG and grid are operating and in all those combined situations you do not have uh, any possibility of some zone being left unprotected in all these uh, cases. Okay. So, the next thing is uh, we will uh, see now that you have uh, identified what could be the, uh, the zones of protection and what could be considered interconnection and uh, say critical load protection, then you could consider what would be could potentially be some of the relaying functionality that could be used to accomplish uh, some of the protection. And here what we have we are looking at is say an example of uh, a DG that is interconnected through a delta Y transformer and you might have a facility where you have non-critical loads which can be turned off and critical loads which needs uh, support in terms of power quality plus you might be ensuring that you are trying to compensate and prevent uh, say peak loading over here. You might be trying to uh, pump power so that your demand in, on your facility does not exceed some particular power level because many times the utility will charge if your demand is higher. Okay. So, you might have a variety of such requirements and then you would ask what sort of relaying would be required to um, accomplish such objective. Okay. So, we will uh, discuss uh, this in the next class. We'll, uh, so, we have seen that uh, it is not just uh, uh, the, the switching functionality, but also the protection that goes behind the smarts that go behind uh, such functionality that is important. So, if you look at the overall protection diagram, it may look complicated, but if you look at it as one function by uh, one by one, it is actually uh, relatively simple and straightforward to actually see what type of uh, protection would be required, what would be required to trip and what would be required to uh, close a circuit breaker and uh, even though it looks like you are having a large number of such functions in a modern uh, multifunctional uh, protective uh, relay all these functionalities will be implemented in a single package. So, it, uh, in terms of hardware it does not increase the uh, amount of hardware that you would need to uh, have to actually implement. Uh, all this functionality of course, you need the sensors without the sensed information you cannot make a decision, but once the sensed information is available then it is just the smarts or the algorithms that you implement to actually see whether uh, this uh, your objectives which we discuss can be accomplished. Okay. Thank you.